Hi, I thought we'd do a quick teardown of my new, uh, well they're not new, the second hand, um, <laughs> studio monitor speakers. These are a Focal Professional CMS40 and uh, by a lot of accounts they are a very highly regarded uh, studio monitor, four inch job, so they're not large but, oh, Diecast alloy case, absolutely fantastic. They're actually, I believe they're discontinued. I think they've been replaced by the uh, Focal Shape uh, series studio monitors, which some people say aren't as good as these original uh, CMS ones, but eh. Anyway, um, four inch woofer and an inverted dome. You can see it, it actually curves back inwards there. Um, aluminium and magnesium dome tweeter. So it, I don't know, the magnesium makes it super special. Anyway, um, its ability to reproduce uh, detail is uh, um, significantly better than the um, other studio monitors that I've had. So very nice. We've got a front firing uh, port on it. We've got uh, input uh, sensitivity, power switch on the front, which is really handy. And on the bottom here, we've got these um, uh, screw out feed and it comes with a little rubber mat, a vibration isolation mat. We've got a mounting point uh, on the bottom and it's got mounting points on the back as well, so you can, you know, mount these on like arms or anything. Apparently it's like an industry standard uh, mounting systems. And it's a two-way uh, amplifier system, 25 watt tweeter, 25 watt woofer nominal. It's got uh, low frequency uh, gain settings, high frequency gain settings, and input uh, sensitivity there. And it's very likely that uh, that is also used as a heat sink. Uh, maybe, is it? I don't know, but it's a die-cast alloy. They use the whole thing, the whole case as a uh, heat sink for this thing but uh, yeah down the bottom we've got uh, XLR input unfortunately it doesn't have a uh, TRS balanced input that's a bit annoying but uh, unbalanced uh, input there and yes they are French but manufactured in China oh sad face why can't they make them in France their higher end ones are made in France but uh, yeah I don't know if the actual drivers are manufactured in France because they use these drivers on a lot of their other uh, high-end products too I'm led to believe. They even supply a tool for taking off the grills so we'll pop off the woofer grill and it's a uh, glass polymer thing it's a glass filled fiber cone or something like that there you go for you uh, cone aficionados and of course the Intuita as I said aluminium and magnesium alloy has a uh, phase plug on here but they do uh, provide an optional uh, grill on here there's a little bit of attenuation in that uh, apparently so anyway um, the drivers are quite novel I like the inverted uh, dome design it's very nice you know, I am blown away by the quality of construction in this thing. Die-cast alloy. They're actually uh, designed for use on the uh, road as well. You know, you could, if you need, uh, like, little portable studio monitors on the road, and you might very well do, um, then, you know, these things apparently fit the bill quite well. Anyway, let's crack it open. Uh, Got to use an Allen key to get it open. None of this talks rubbish. Oh, this is what you want to see from your studio monitors. Oh... For those who want to know why I'm not using the uh, row kits anymore is because they were a bit a bit boomy, a bit bassy for my uh, new little cubicle, um, editing cubicle that I'm in. These are uh, much better in that regard. And of course, in such a small space, of course, you want the uh, front, fire, you know, near walls and stuff like that. You want the uh, front firing ports as well. So I've got the screws out of that, but... Ah, geez, let's give it a... No, just needed some gentle persuasion there. So, there we go. I think it's going to come off now. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, hang on. Oh, there's cables. Yeah, cables. I'm going to have to take them off. Hang on. Oh, got some infill foam. The first thing I noticed, though, oh, look at that toroidal down there in its own little cage. Ah. Oh. Thing of beauty is a joy forever. Behold the Wonkamobile. Thing of beauty is a joy forever. I'll tell you what, I'm thoroughly impressed by this. Um, the, the cable loom, it, like they've got a wrap around the uh, cables, presumably uh, like an acoustic, um, you know, for acoustic properties. Don't want the uh, bare wires flapping around in the breeze. So just to take the edge off that, then they've got like a wrap 
around there to keep all the wiring in place. It's actually tied into the uh, tied into the screw over there, and that's just gorgeous. <laughs> it's I don't know how they assemble this thing. There's obviously a way, and I've got a maybe the transformer's got to come out, and then I can get the cables. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's very impressive so far. Wow, this is just like streets ahead of other studio monitors that I've torn down. Um, it's just fantastic. It looks like they've got, there's a 100 volt tap. These are 240 volt uh, jobs. So can we get like different, can you mod these for different uh, uh, regions, different voltage regions? Maybe, but anyway, lots of um, sealing around every aspect. Even the terminals on the back there have sealing. This is all, uh, of course, to give a like a completely airtight seal. They don't want, they want it all coming out of the port on the front. They don't want any leakage anywhere else. And as such, you can see the ridges around the outside of the die cast, um, and there's actually a, uh, looks like, a, is it rubber? Or just, anyway, it's got some sort of seal inside that groove, and then that just mates up to the uh, top so they <laughs> the acoustic ceiling on this is absolutely fantastic first rate and just the pcb mounts down here they're all like uh, molded into the die cast chassis so <laughs> that's one of the most rigid mounts you'll ever find absolutely remarkable some more ceiling down in there to the uh ports that on the uh, back the um, xlr connector and whatnot and the toroidal transformer there has been uh, high pot tested. If you don't know what high pot is, it stands for high potential. So they basically put a, a you can get special purpose uh, test gear to do this, but basically put a uh, high voltage across uh, the transformer, the primary and the secondary to make sure, you know, it's all working fine and there's no uh, breakdowns, internal uh, faults in the transformer, that kind of stuff. The humanity! Yeecon brand caps. Oh, focal. Everything was going so fantastic. Why can't you have a Panasonic or a Nichicon in there? Come on. Anyway, apart from that, the board looks very, very nice. I like it. Um, it's a mix of uh, surface mount and through hole. We've got all our uh, film caps on here. Oh, special yellow one. Um, but it's very nice. Of course, they've got the uh, uh, seal around the uh, bottom of the caps uh, so they don't flap around in the breeze with your base. So apart from that, it is actually very nice. Um, TLO74s, uh, classic fare for uh, something like this. Going down there, there's our tweeter and woofer uh, output. Got some uh, big surface mount resistors there. And an integrated amp down the bottom. So maybe one's the woofer, one's the tweeter. Not sure what, but uh, yeah, we've got three packages. We've got our... Uh, bridge rectifier over here. They all share the same heatsink. As I said, it's only, well, it's 50 watts total, 25 watts uh, tweeter, 25 watts woofer, nominal, and uh, they actually rate on the woofer. Um, I believe it's uh, night volts per millisecond. They actually rate the, uh, they rate the rate. And of course, uh, slew rate can matter in a speaker design like this. I mean, for an identical cone, for an identical power, if you can't, if your slew rate's just not there, um, then your cone just can't move physical, you know, the physical inertia of the cone just can't move uh, as fast. But of course, you know, there's tons of stuff that goes into uh, what makes one speaker better than another. You know, part of it, you know, is slew rate and bandwidth and uh, performance of the uh, amplifier. And of course, the design of the, uh, the, <laughs> the main component, of course, is the uh, design of the uh, drivers uh, themselves. So this big ass magnet on the back of that thing. Look at it, absolutely enormous. I won't take out the woofer and the tweeter. There's nothing else to really uh, see on there. And for those curious, yes, this does have the uh, a slight hum in the uh, tweeter, just like uh, the other studio monitors that I have. So even these uh, real expensive focals, not real, real expensive, but you know, moderately expensive uh, focals have the same issue. You wanna see? Yeah, got some thermal paste down there. Oh no, the screw! Yeah, but that toroidal transformer, that looks like a bobby dazzler, doesn't it? And they haven't made the amateur hour mistake of, uh, you know, making the shorter turn with the bolt or anything like that. They know what they're doing. But that's, you know, that's very nicely supported in there. It's on its own bracket and uh, shielded around the outside. You know, that's, that's just terrific. And you've got to get the light at the right angle. Get those part numbers. I can't actually read that on my LCD, so I'm going to have to do that in editing. 
Oh, there you go. I can read that. That's a uh, 7905, is it? Oh, there you go. 7815. Yep. And 7915. Well, that makes sense. There you go. And they've got some diode protection there, too. You can see those little M2 diodes. And that's a National uh, LM4766 uh, dual 40 watt power amplifier. Now, this Texas Instruments rubbish. And it's more than suitable for the job. It is rated for um, two channel at uh, 40 watts per channel. But as I said, uh, this is 25 watt woofer, 25 watt tweeter uh, capable design. So they're using it well under. And you wouldn't want to uh, use it at the maximum 40 watts anyway, because the distortion is going to go, you know, up. And it's not going to be linearly, it's going to go <laughs> up. It's going to be pretty bad at that 40 watts so you know the performance for this thing is specified at 30 watts so using it at 25 is actually uh, quite nice and uh, conservatively rated so yeah no problems whatsoever and of course the entire design is the heatsink you know the entire thing not to mention that it is uh, connected to the diecast chassis so thermally fantastic and you'll notice here that uh, there's Loctite on all the screws holding down the boards in this thing, plus Loctite on the back of the screws holding down that uh, bar for the transistors. Very nice touch. And if you notice these uh, four ceramic capacitors down here, 12 by 6 package, they're actually across uh, all the diodes inside the bridge rectifier. And that's a common technique for uh, actually reducing uh, switching transient noise in the diodes. Um, even though, like, you might think it's 50 hertz, but there can be, like, higher frequency stuff in there that this gets rid of. So once again, very nice touch. And you can see the uh, ceiling on the back of the tweeter wires down in there. And that woofer is nice and like, almost tucks out, takes up the entire depth of this thing. It must have a, a decent throw on that uh, cone. I'm not going to go push it right in and find out where the limits are. But anyway, I like the uh, acoustic design. Look at the uh, uh, <laughs> the ports here. They've got, a separate, uh, they've got two separate ports and a big long curved chews, which looks like big you know, exhausts and stuff like that. So, you know, Focal are a, uh, you know, a high-end, <laughs> reputable speaker manufacturer. So I'm sure they've, like, you know, done the measurements and uh, whatnot on the acoustic design of that thing. And its performance is really quite remarkable for a little four-inch uh, design. It, you know, it really uh, puts some higher-end, uh, like some larger, uh, you know, a five- or six-inch uh, jobs to shame. Oh, and they've even got the front of the die cast there connected to mains earth. Look at that. Nice. That'd be Loctite too. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed a look at a bit more upmarket uh, studio monitor there. These focals. And I'm very, very impressed. Um, they really know what they're doing. It's uh, it really is a, you know, quite, a, quite a significant difference to uh, ones that are not... Probably not even half the price of these ones. These aren't hugely expensive to some of the other ones I've uh, looked at. They're not like thousands and thousands of dollars. They're not like, you know, 10 times the cost. But you can really see the uh, you know, design and quality differences inside this thing. A shame about the caps in there. But um, apart from that, yeah, it's really first class uh, design and construction. Really quite remarkable. Die cast cases. Ugh, sex on a stick. So if you like the teardown, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Hope you liked it. Catch you next time.